Here's a talented winemaker crafting small production wines from New Zealand to California and all around the world. Meet Goldschmidt Vineyards. Thank you so much for joining us here today. So tell me, how in the world did you come from New Zealand, make the jump to California, you, all around the world? Tell me, what's your backstory? Here? I don't know, Shannon. I mean, we've only got like five minutes. Here, I know. I <laughs> but um, no, what I wanted to do in, when I was in New Zealand was I always wondered what it was like outside. I'd already studied in Australia, so I knew what that was like, and I wanted to go somewhere where people hadn't been before, and so that's when I started my world travel, and the first country I went to, well, I did come to California, I worked in Napa, because everyone had to see what Napa was like, so I did that, and then I went straight down to Chile, and that was really what gave me my big break, because no, there was no other gringos in Chile back in those days, and so it was really cutting edge, no one spoke any English, I was outside my comfort zone, and making wines that I've never made before, like things like Carmen Air, Carignan um, and many of these other native varietals that they have in Chile. So yeah. And then eventually you found your way to California. So a really interesting situation. I was offered a job in Napa Valley by a pretty famous winery who was, who was owned by a Chilean company and um, I ended up coming over here, went through the rigmarole and decided I didn't want to take the job. But while I was here, there's a very famous lady, very famous winemaker, uh, her name was Zelma Long. She was the first Mondavi winemaker who was not a Mondavi. She was the first winemaker in California to do barrel ferment uh, for Chardonnay. She was the second female graduate out of UC Davis. And I always wanted to meet her. And she was at Simi. And so I came to Simi and met her. Didn't think anything of it. Went off to Europe. I was going to do a French vintage. And I got a call back. and. They offered me a job. I'm like, well, what job? You know, I was supposed to go back to New Zealand after 18 months. So I thought I'd give it a go for six months, came over for six months, and stayed for 15 years at Simi. So there it is. Obviously quite successful. You're now consulting all around the globe. Tell me about some of the, the areas that you travel to to make wine. The one that I've been involved with the most, of course, is Chile, because I've been making wine there since 1989. And except for a couple of vintages when I was at the beginning of Simi, I missed those, but since then I've been there pretty much full on. Winemaking on the edge, and that's what I like to do. I, I, I really think wine's become boring. I mean, we can all make wine, but can you make a wine that's interesting and, and on the edge, not only in terms of where the vineyards are, but also in terms of technique? And I laugh today, I mean, a lot of people are using concrete tanks, for instance. Well, we were using concrete tanks back in the late 70s. I mean, there's no... It's like a pendulum. Everyone goes, oh, wild ferment, concrete tank, right. no wood, and the pendulum just goes faster and faster. And, and uh, But that's what makes wine interesting. And we just don't want to drink a Napa Valley Cabernet every day. Yeah, I like drinking Napa Valley Cabernet, but I want to also drink other wines. And so making wines with other really famous winemakers, making a lot of wine further and further south, uh, just like I am in Canada, really far north at the 49th parallel. So it's really cool climate. Grape growing. Wow. And so making wine in Moyeco in Chile and making wine in the Okanagan in British Columbia, there's a difference. There's a uniqueness. And look at the people. The people are dynamic and interesting and creating and, 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 and implementing their ideas. Because we can all have great ideas, but can you implement them as well? That's very true. So what is it that you do that makes your wines the most interesting then? Really good question. And my quick answer is to make sure the wines are culturally correct. Right. I can make, if I make Napa Valley Cabernet at 16 alcohol, Alexander Valley Cabernet at 16, Maipo, McLaren Valley in Australia, Uco Valley in Argentina or up in Canada or wherever, once you make wines at that level, they all taste the same. So the idea is to make wines culturally correct, varietally correct, and make them at lower alcohol so that, I know this is a, this is a euphemism, but so that terroir really shows through. Interesting. So how much do you let the terroir speak for itself and how much do you, you know, want to tweak it in your winemaking process? There's a saying, you know, wine is made in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. Um, that's the base. Right. But 
Somebody has to make a decision on how to farm it, what way to farm it, is it organic, is it biodynamic, is it traditional, is it vertical, is it a split, is it how are we going to treat the soil, I mean I could go on and on and on about the vineyard, but then some guy, girl, comes along and makes a picking decision on a specific day, and it's not just because the sugar, flavour and tannin are in the right balance, it's because, oh my god, my winery's full, uh, the rain is coming, so all of these factors also have an influence. And then you bring the grapes in, do you cold soak it, do you not, do you add yeast, do you not add yeast? There are so many differences. And so at the end, can you recall how that grape tasted and how that wine is? And are they similar? Does it match? And is it different to the wine that you made over there? So if you like this wine today, you're going to like it next year as well. But hopefully I'm increasing the quality every year. So it's site-specific winemaking. Each wine is a single vineyard a vineyard that I've been working on for more than 15 years. So there's that consistency. And so, it's a lot of history. God forbid if we ever run to the bunker and you have to choose a wine to take, right. take one of these, because they're gonna last. I've been making wines from these vineyards for 20 years, you know. Well, cheers to that. Absolutely. This globetrotting winemaker gives a new meaning to tasting experience, and his wines are extraordinary. Be sure to get yours today, and thank you for your support.